Good morning. It is 10 a.m. and at this time I would like to call to order the special joint board video conference meeting of the Via Metropolitan Transit in Advanced Transportation District Board of Trustees of July the 2nd, 2020. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you and at this time I will do a roll call. Trustee Merck. Here. Trustee Matthews. Here. Trustee Gavito. Here. Trustee Marn. Here. Secretary Johnson. Here. Vice Chair Como. Here. Trustee Brown. Here. Trustee Cooper. Here. Trustee Villanueva. Present. Trustee Malone. Here. Ms. Elder, do we have a quorum? Yes, ma'am, we do. All right, thank you very much. Um, at this time, we will go directly into agenda item number two. Um, Mr. Arndt, do we have any announcements? Just one brief announcement. I think uh, I would ask everyone to acknowledge our chair. This is her birthday, special day. And so let's uh, all wish her a happy birthday here virtually. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. I'm blessed to uh, have one more year. So, uh, so uh, thank you very thank much. You very much. All right, uh, we'll move on to agenda item number three, uh, citizens to be heard. Do we have citizens to be heard this morning? Madam Chair, we have three citizens to be heard. We've identified one of them so far. All right, uh, let me make a statement uh, prior to that. It's, uh, we now come to the citizens to be heard portion of our public meeting. The board is always interested in hearing the comments and concerns from our patrons and citizens in the San Antonio Bear County area. Questions that may arise during this portion of the meeting regarding programs, projects, or service issues will be addressed at a later date by the president, CEO, and or his staff. This process assures that VIA is in compliance with the Open Meetings Act, which does not allow the VIA board to deliberate matters that are not on the agenda this morning. Additionally, this process assures that you receive the most accurate response to your question or concern. And we thank you for taking the time and effort to share your comments with us this morning. You may start. Thanks, Madam Chair. Each citizen will have three minutes to speak. There will, there will be an audio warning chime with, at the one minute mark and then a final buzzer at the three minute mark. Our first citizen to be heard is Stuart Rowe. Can everyone hear me? Yes, yes. Mr. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, Chair Andrade and trustees of the board. Thank you for the opportunity to share today. My name is Stuart Rowe. I'm a member of VIA's Transit Community Council, but speak today as a concerned San Antonian. I've been following VIA Reimagine and VIA's response to the coronavirus pandemic closely, having tuned into board meetings as well as other presentations as part of VTCC. I want to address two topics today. Quickly, I want to voice my support for moving forward with the 1-8 cent sales tax referendum and support extensive marketing efforts to make sure that it passes. However, more importantly, I'd like to focus more time on VIA's priorities as it transitions from VIA via reimagines to its Keep SA Moving Plan. I have serious concerns about the priorities of the Keep SA Moving Plan. To quote VIA reimagined, quote, tomorrow's better bus system will offer more, or even more frequent and reliable service, more weekend service, more express and crosstown routes, all things you said were most important to you when you traveled with VIA. Imagine that, end quote. The most important factors based on input from the thousands of riders surveyed was what I just read. However, in the discussions around Keep SA moving about how to prioritize VIA's pandemic limited cash, I've heard several trustees voice support to use por portions of the remaining funds to quote, greatly expand mobility on demand options. I'm sure that those who utilize VIA Link enjoy the end to end experience and shorter wait times. However, expanding the service at the expense of core service during this time is not equitable and it's not a wise use of VIA's very limited resources due to the fact that it undermines transit's fundamental advantage over other modes of transportation, which is capacity. More importantly, it undermines riders' key desires. As CEO Art has pointed out in recent calls, in San Antonio, as well as in virtually every other city, on-demand transit is much more expensive to provide than fixed route service for the same ridership 
So I'd like to get more clarification from the board and data to support why this would be the best allocation of the already pandemic limited funds at VIA's disposal. To quote transit expert Stephen Higgishide, when existing bus routes are unreliable and slow, I'll add infrequent in this case with the pandemic, focusing attention on microtransit is like trying to perfect dessert at a restaurant that routinely burns the entrees. Pandemic or not, but especially during the time when San Antonio's riders need VIA the most, VIA should focus on the most efficient deployment of its remaining capital and continue to align with the same priorities that riders have already overwhelmingly expressed. Focus here would improve transit regardless of the pandemic, but especially now, offering more frequent service on high volume routes can mitigate swells in demand that would compromise riders' ability to safely social distance on VIA vehicles. I look forward to continuing this conversation with VIA as part of VTCC, and if any board members would like to discuss further, I'd, like, I'd love to continue the conversation and encourage you to reach out to Trustees Brown and Gavito for my contact information. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak this morning. Thank you, Mr. Rob. Madam Chair, our, our final two citizens to be heard have not shown up, so there are no more citizens to be heard. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Young. All right, members, uh, we will move on to agenda item number four, which is a discussion and possible action to adopt a resolution to provide notice to the City of San Antonio and the Bear County Commissioner's Court of the Board of Trustees' intent to order a referendum concerning the assessment of an additional one-eighth percent sales and use tax to be placed on the ballot at the next general election. Um, members, what is your pleasure? I, I couldn't have sent it to them that, that fast. Madam Chair, would you like for me to read uh, the proposed motion? Yes, and I believe, I believe Secretary Johnson was going to make that motion. Okay, I can I can read it aloud as I have, um, at his, as it has been prepared, and have him make that motion. Make yes. That motion. yes, yes, please do. So it'd be a motion that the Advanced Transportation District Board of Trustees move forward to provide notice to the City of San Antonio and the Bear County Commissioners Court of the ATD Board's intent to order a referendum for the assessment of an additional one eighth percent sales and use tax. Madam Chair, I urge the motion as read. Thank you. I believe Trustee Brown, did you have a second? Is he muted? Members, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Trustee Brown. I'm sorry. Members, we have a motion and we have a second. Uh, without any further comment or discussion, does anyone have any further comment or discussion? If not, I'm going to call for a roll call vote. Trustee Merck. Yes. Trustee Matthews. Yes. Trustee Gavito. Yes. Trustee Marn. Yes. Trustee Malone. Yes. Trustee Villanueva. Yes. Trustee Cooper. Yes. Trustee Brown, you made the motion. And uh, Vice Chair Como. Yes. Secretary Johnson. Yes. And, and the chair votes aye. Motion passes by unanimous vote. Ms. Elder. Record noted? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you very much. All right, at this time, I believe our Vice Chair Como would like to make some comments and then I will make a final statement. Uh, Madam Chair, fellow trustees, President Arndt, and all who are interested in transit in the San Antonio area. As my fellow trustees will attest, I always have a lot to say about we are, what we are doing here this morning. So I beg your indulgence for just a few minutes. Madam Chair, I commend you for your extraordinary leadership and your perseverance in attempting to negotiate with seated leaders who apparently just used VIA as a stalling tactic. I am proud of our dynamic board, consisting of dedicated and hardworking individuals 
who take our responsibility of helping San Antonio move forward to heart. As we proceed towards the November election, we have to have hope and hope your credentials in transportation as well as government in general are unequaled. We have hope on our side. And what an extraordinary day on her birthday that we're doing this. And I also want to thank uh, Trustee Cooper for your efforts in trying to, uh, to bring about a deal that was not to be. In earning a degree in government, taking courses at a junior college, University of Texas and University of Houston, I took several courses in bureaucracy. I worked for the state of Texas. I worked for Harris County government and I represented education workers in over 40 districts in Texas, including three school districts for multiple years and multiple superintendents. I have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of all the bureaucracies that I have experienced. VIA is the most transparent and professional advantage that I have ever witnessed. None of this board were here when Jeff Orrant took the reins at VIA but I think each of us would vote in a heartbeat to keep him in this current position. He served San Antonio in so many ways, ways even beyond his VIA duties. I salute a great San Antonio citizen, Jeff Arndt. Thank you for your extraordinary leadership, your vision, your excellence, and your fortitude. You have assembled an excellent team and you run a tight ship and we thank you. And I also think it is important to acknowledge all of the hard work that the VIA staff has done uh, and to express my support for their efforts in the face of some inappropriate contact by those who should know better. As we embark on this historic vote, a few individuals have suggested that we cannot win if San Antonio's mayor is opposed to us. Just a few months ago, our mayor was helping to reimagine a new transit system. If we are not successful in November, imagine a transit system standing still or perhaps going backwards in a few years. I believe in my heart of hearts that our mayor will agree with our efforts to do what we were appointed to do, and that is to provide the best transit system that we can afford. I believe that each of our trustees has diligently examined our responsibility and will vote their conscience. In accepting the position of vice chair of the VIA board, I took an oath, quote, to faithfully execute my duties as vice chair of VIA. And 60 years before the vice chair oath, I took another oath, quote, on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country to help other people at all times, end quote. In casting by vote today, I will bear fidelity to both of those oaths. Now let me share some transit history gleaned from a research project by VIA's first chair, Marilyn Jones, who submitted this to Trinity University in 1978 towards her Master's of Arts in Urban Studies degree. Marilyn, who became a friend of mine a few years later when I moved here in 1981, was very instrumental in helping to pass the legislation that enabled transit system to seek voter approval for up to one cent sales tax to fund transit. Governor Dolph Briscoe, probably the best governor in history for San Antonio and South Texas, signed the law into effect on September the 1st, 1977. Among those pushing for the legislation are familiar and revered names here in San Antonio. Mayor Lila Cockrell, Council Member Glenn Hartman, and Council Member Reverend Claude Black. I worked on funding and improvements to San Pedro Springs Park with Lila Cockrell when she was president of the San Antonio Parks Foundation. Glenn Hartman was a fellow parishioner at Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church, and we had an excellent relationship. I served with Reverend Claude Black on a nonprofit pharmacy board located in St. Paul Square back in the early 80s. They were pioneers and leaders in San Antonio Transit, and I will uphold their legacy by voting to continue what they started, securing at least a portion of the one-eighth cent for the original intent of transit. Also in Marilyn Jones's thesis, she mentioned that the city of San Antonio 
provided a subsidy to VIA's predecessor, the San Antonio Transit Board, in the amount of $4.2 million in the year 1977. Of course, the city budget was much smaller than it is today, and $4.2 million went much further in 77 than it does today. My point is that the city of San Antonio has provided greater funding in the past than they are doing today. When our one eight cent proposition passes, the city of San Antonio will receive about $9 million for advanced transportation district funding. It is hard for me to comprehend that city leaders would oppose something that is so vital to transportation and vital to helping eliminate the severe traffic congestion that we all experience. Now let's not forget what VIA gives back to the city of San Antonio. In 2019 alone, San Antonio received about $600,000 since VIA is a major purchaser of CNG gas plus electricity from city public service and is also a significant user of SALS water. And the revenue which flows to the city from CPS and SALS approximates $600,000. There's also been a lot of talk about other vital programs that would like to have the funding. I have been an early and ardent supporter of protecting our aquifer and expanding the trail system. For 30 years or so, I have supported the goals and aspirations of Project Quest and job training programs. I strongly support funding for these vital, vital programs. But what has been lost in this discussion is that those other programs have multiple potential funding sources. Transit has only one. For transit, reclaiming the only funding source that's available to us is vital for San Antonio's growth which we all know is coming and is already here. With a long ballot in November, perhaps in the midst of a pandemic, we know that this election will challenge the best of us. So as I cast my vote today to place this proposition on the ballot in November, I call on the best instincts of San Antonio voters to vote for the sustainable progress that I believe we all deserve and we all desire. So let's make this happen. Si se puede. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. And I, I have to say it's an honor to serve alongside you. Uh, at this time, before I make my statement, I believe that Ms. Elder, our legal counsel, has a clarification. Yes, I just wanted to be clear. And um, Mr. Como has already pointed out and clarified as well that we are talking about the election at the next general election that is in November as pointed out in the resolution before you and the board documents. But I just wanted um, to make that clarifying statement that I'm sure everyone uh, is aware of, but to make that in the public statement in the public forum so that we're all aware. Oh, of November, 2020. November, 2020, yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Elder. Well, at this time, I would like to take a moment uh, to directly address our riders and the people of San Antonio and Bear County. You are who we are working for and whose interests we are tasked to serve as volunteer board members at VIA. In recent weeks, there have been several conversations about the future of VIA service and what that means to you, your families, businesses, and employers in this community that we live in and love. VIA board members, managers, staff, and partners have met with local leaders for what we had hoped would be discussions about how best to move forward together to get our essential workers to essential jobs, to connect our seniors to critical services, and to preserve the lifeline for those who rely on VIA as our primary transportation. You see, VIA moves people. We help bridge the gaps in equity and opportunity that are being exploited by this crisis. COVID-19 shined a light on the true extent of San Antonio's reliance on the transit system and made clear that any strategy to address inequity in our community must include VIA and our riders. The average VIA rider is a person of color who takes the bus to work, who does not have a car and has an income below the poverty line. 
<clears throat> they are the ones local recovery plans are designed to assist. They are the ones who will lose if these plans fail to invest in mobility. We came to the table in good faith, asking for a seat, asking for a role, asking for options, and laying out our plans to support comprehensive recovery and future growth in San Antonio. Instead, we were told that now is not the time. Then and now, we respectfully disagree. You see, transit is important for our community, and it is important to us, because it is our responsibility to make sure that it remains a priority for our city and region. There's no question. We understand that these are difficult times. We see and we feel the effects of COVID-19 on our economy, our resources, and our families. That's why we were committed to continuing talks to find a path that would support the city's recovery plan and our community's transit priorities with viable funding for long-term service to the people of San Antonio. This is not about filling a budget hole created by COVID-19. It is about closing the opportunity gaps created by 40 years of chronic underfunding. We had hoped that we could move forward together. Every strategy, every strategy which is being discussed to address long-time inequalities and future challenges depend on mobility. People will need transit to hold jobs. They will need transit to complete training and education that helps overcome income inequality. They will need transit to go to medical appointments and support local businesses. In every application of the equity lens, people will need transit to succeed. We know because we've met them. They are the 35% of students who attend the Young Women's Leadership Academy and take VIA to get to school, including the class solitarian who will be attending MIT in the fall and who credits VIA for making her journey possible. And all the riders who take VIA to work, including our healthcare workers. For them and everyone we serve, we must find a way to secure viable funding. As our Vice Chairman Como reminded us, when VIA was created, the state legislature gave us one tool designed to allow our community to choose when to make additional investments in their transit system. A cent of sales tax, of which, of which we have only been able to leverage a portion for over 40 years. This penny is our only mechanism to funding operations. In 1977, city leaders decided that VIA only needed half. And maybe 43 years ago, that was true but it is not true anymore. What is a true statement is that we must reverse our 40 year underinvestment in transportation. And while we wish that there was another time to have this conversation, we are forced to take steps now to ensure lasting change. The board is required to take this administrative first step for a July 6 deadline to give notice of our intent to order a referendum be placed on the ballot in November of 2020. We then will have until August 17 to call for the election. When we met last week, trustees had agreed to delay action on this motion to give us time to continue working on finding an alternative funding source and ask officials to keep their commitment to support VIA and save this system from historic neglect. Well, the time is up. We were not able to secure a workable or responsible plan from city leaders. So we must go directly to the people. Too many livelihoods depend on a transit system with adequate routes and frequency of availability. The VIA board would be negligent in its duty to sustain the system if we stood by and watched funding 
which was originally made available for transit, diverted to other uses and did not appeal to the voters. If we do not act now, we may not have the opportunity again, not in May, not in a generation. We remain open to exploring solutions on how to get there, but we believe that those discussions should take place in public with input from the community. Even now, discussions are underway behind closed doors to divert funds intended to transportation for other yet to be designed purposes. By asking for the election, we ask that these discussions with other interest groups be brought into the open so that the public can transparently weigh in on the priorities and help decide the role of transit in an equity plan. We cannot support a plan that takes a step backward for a service as essential as mobility and an issue as critical as equity for San Antonians. We cannot support a plan that pulls funding away from transit at the expense of our riders. We are encouraged to hear city council members support the possibility of including funds for VIA in the city budget next fiscal year. However, dollars from the city's general fund are subject to annual approval. And though helpful, helpful, they fall short of the commitment that riders need to assure that they will have the service they need in the future. If we delay again, we would lose the one option provided by state law. If we fail to adequately fund transit, we will have failed working San Antonians who are helping rebuild our economy and will further limit options for people with disabilities and seniors who rely on transit as their only means of mobility. San Antonio cannot effectively start an equity strategy by taking a step, step backward in public transit. The very same people who have been locked out of our wage, education, and health advantages will be left without the physical access that they need in which only public transit can provide. The cost of inaction is just too high and we will not ask you to pay the price. The choice should belong to the voters. The VIA board and our leadership is focused on make it tra making transit part of a brighter future in San Antonio with support from our community. We are grateful to our partners and all those who have taken the time to listen, to understand, and to speak up on this important issue. Thank you, board members, for your bold action. And thank you, San Antonio. You are our motivation to continue the work that will pave this path. We trust in your wisdom to help us do what is necessary and the right to preserve this lifeline that connects our community. Thank you very much. Here, here. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, moving on to agenda item number five. Uh, Ms. Elder, do we have a legal briefing? No, ma'am, we do not. All right, members, um, we will all remember this day. And I'm proud of the commitment and the passion uh, that all our VIA Board of Trustees have for our riders and for our community because it does affect our community. So at this time, I will entertain agenda item number six, which is a motion to adjourn. Madam Chair, since I didn't say anything the whole meeting, I should be rewarded. I move that we adjourn. Second, Madam Chair. Members, we have motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 And to the VIA staff, thank you so much for all your work and for all the support um, for today. Have a safe and happy 4th of July. And, uh, and again, thank you. Meeting adjourned. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Likewise. Happy birthday. Happy thank birthday. You. Thank you.